heights one time. I think like three and four are the two we're supposed to uh, um, supposed to hit to demo. Okay, that's that's, that's four. That's perfect. That that'll work. Okay, so when you want them, you'll tell me and I'll press four and then one brings them back up. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Judge, also, we have um, met with the defense and agreed upon, um, at this time, uh, I think 163 exhibits, um, one through 163 on the court's evidence list, as well as some others, um, for example, 184. Uh, so. With the court's permission, I will just be referring to them by the number as opposed to the letter, as my understanding is the defense has no objection. Okay, so 184 is coming into evidence as 184, or would it be as 164? Well, Judge, I mean, Yes, uh-huh. Okay, well the reason I, 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 I want to keep it straight is because if you've stipulated through 163, um, what you're indicating would be number 184 is actually marked as U for identification. So if the other exhibits between 163 and that exhibit aren't entered, we're going to have going back to the jury, 1 through 163 and then 184. I understand the court's concern. My anticipation is that they're all going to come in. Okay. Um, well, so, if we're missing some, we're, you know, right. if we're out of numerical order. So there's no objections then to 184 coming into, or you coming in as 184. That's correct. Okay. It will be so marked. Any other, anything else? Okay. Anything else from the defense? No, thank you. All right, let's go ahead and bring the uh, jury in. Very private, Your Honor. Please be seated. Everybody have their notepads and pencils ready? Okay. If the state will call your first witness, please. Chad Joseph. Chad Joseph, please. Solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I repeat it. Just no, you have to yes. say yes, yes, sir. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. <coughs> you may sir. proceed. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. If you'd please tell the members of the jury your name. Chad Joseph. Mr. Joseph, how old are you? Fifteen. Are you in school? Yes. What grade were you in this past school year? Eight. In February of last year, 2012, did you live here in Sanford? Yes. What neighborhood did you live in? Retreat at Twin, Twin Lakes. And what was your street address? 2631 Retreat Rear Circle. Who did you live with in February 2012? My mom. And what is your mother's name? Brandy Green. Did anyone else live with you and your mother back in February of 2012? No. Were you in school in February of 2012? Yes. Where did you go to school? 
Sanford Middle. And what grade were you in then? Seven. Did you know a person by the name of Trayvon Martin? Yes. And how did you meet Trayvon Martin? By Tracy. Tracy, Tracy Martin? Yes. Is that Trayvon Martin's dad? Yes. All right. And how did you come to know Tracy Martin and Trayvon Martin? These two. That's my mom's boyfriend. Tracy Martin is your mother's boyfriend? Yes. All right. Prior to February 2012, had Trayvon Martin ever been to your residence before? Yes. And how would you describe your relationship with Trayvon Martin? Good. Were the two of you close? Yes. Specifically, let me turn your attention to the afternoon of Sunday, February 26th of last year. Was Trayvon Martin at your residence that afternoon? Yes. And what were the two of you doing? Watching TV and playing the game. And when you say playing the game, what do you mean? PS3. Video games? Yeah. All right. And PS3 is PlayStation 3? Yes. Were your mother or Tracy Martin home that afternoon, that Sunday afternoon? No. At some point in the early afternoon, uh, excuse me, early evening or the afternoon, did Trayvon Martin leave your residence? Yes. And where did he go? To the store. And how did Trayvon Martin get to the store? He walked. Did you go with him when he left your residence? No. Why not? Because I was playing a game. Did Trayvon Martin ask you if you wanted anything before he left for the store? Yes. And what was that? Skittles. Is that what you told him? Yes. Had you ever been to the 7-Eleven store closest to your residence when you lived in Retreat at Twin Lakes? Yes. And have you since seen an aerial photograph of the 7-Eleven store and the Retreat at Twin Lakes complex? Yes. Mr. Joseph, let me ask you to turn your attention to that screen and you are if you would turn the lights. Thank you. States Exhibit 1, do you recognize that to be an aerial photograph of the Retreat at Twin Lakes? Yes. Can you describe for the jury where the uh, main gate or main entrance is uh, to that complex? Top middle. And if I were to circle it, is that the main entrance? Yes. All right, can you describe for the members of the jury where the back entrance is? The bottom right. Bottom right. Okay, and have I circled that as well? Yes. All right, um, tell the members of the jury, if you would, where was your residence approximately? Coming in from the back gate to the right, on the left, the first building. All right, and would that, would that be the one that I've circled? Yes. All right, that's where you lived with your mother in February 2012? Yes. Let me show you States Exhibit 2. Do you recognize that as an aerial photograph of the Retreat of Twin Lakes to include the 7-Eleven store? Yes. All right, and is the 7-Eleven store uh, appropriately marked in States Exhibit 2? Yes. To the left of the screen within the circle? Yes. All right. Your Honor, you may... Thank you. Do you recall exactly what time it was when Trayvon Martin left to go to the 7-Eleven? No. Did Trayvon Martin have a cell phone with him that afternoon when he left to go to the store? Yes. Did you ever call Trayvon Martin after he left to go to the store? Yes. And what phone did you use to call Trayvon Martin? My phone. Did you have a cell phone? Yes. In 2012, February, what was your cell phone number? 407-692-7801. All right. 01. Let me say it a little bit slower. 407-692-7801? Yes. Okay. Did Trayvon Martin answer his cell phone when you called him? Yes. And did he tell you what he was doing? Yes. What was that? He was on his way back. Did he tell you anything about the weather conditions outside? That it was raining. Did you speak with Trayvon Martin on that phone call for a long time? No. Was, that, was it actually a very short call? Yes. After you hung up the phone with Trayvon Martin, did you ever see or speak with him again? No. What did you do after you got off the phone with Trayvon Martin? Watch TV, play the game. And when you say play the game again, are you referring to the PlayStation 3? Yes. 
Where were you playing um, video games within your residence? In my room. And is your room on the first floor or the second floor? Second. And does your room face the back uh, grass area of your residence or the, the street re retreat view circle? The street. Did the PlayStation 3 uh, game system that you were using have headphones? Yes. Can you describe those headphones for the jury? Covers your ears. And were you using those headphones that evening? Yes. At any point that evening, did you hear anything that sounded like an argument or a gunshot from outside your residence? No. Did you ever go outside your residence that evening? No. Did you ever recall looking outside your residence that evening? No. Did Trayvon Martin come home that night? No. Did you try calling Trayvon Martin's cell phone again that evening after you had spoken with him the first time? Yes. And what happened when you called his cell phone? No one answered. Did your mother, Brandy Green, and Tracy Martin come home that Sunday evening? Yes. And were you still awake when they got home? Yes. Did you go to bed after your mother and Tracy Martin came home? Yes. The next day, Monday, February 27th, did you have school that morning? Yes. Did you go to school that morning? Yes. And did you learn at some point that day that Trayvon Martin had been killed? Yes. When did you learn that? After I came home from school. And who advised you that Trayvon Martin had been killed? My mom and Tracy. All right. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. You know, that's all I have. Thank you, Cross. Thank you. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Just have a couple of questions. You had said earlier that you were um, watching TV or playing um, the games with Trayvon Martin. Can you repeat that? Yeah, were you playing games, playing on the video games with Trayvon Martin? Yes. Um, was he on the phone much while you were playing those games? I don't remember. Do you ever remember being on the phone at all? I don't remember. I'm I sorry? Don't, I don't remember. Okay. But as you were playing, was he playing the video games with you, or was with he ever on the phone while he was playing the games? He was playing the game with me. Okay. And if we were to look back and say that he left the, um, the apartment about, let's say, 6 or so. I, well, you don't need to know it exactly. Let's say he left about 6. About how many hours had you and he been playing video games? Mm, I don't know. Approximately? I don't remember. I'm sorry? I don't remember. Do you recall how many of those hours of the day you were watching TV with him? Mm, no. Not at all? Were you either watching TV or playing games with him that day? I was playing games. Okay. Was he there with you? Yes. And was he playing games as well? Yes. Okay. You know the area right behind your apartment there, what we sort of call the dog walk? I'm not sure if you call that, but that pathway that leads between the two buildings? Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. You know where the, the little dog station is at the end of it? Yes. You know where that is? Yes. Have you ever walked that from the, your backyard there? Sort of down yes. to that walkway? Yes. But how long, just guess for me if you would, how long do you think it would take you to walk that? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. About, do you know about how far it is? Mm. Okay. Let me ask you this. You were stepped outside the backyard of your house to the walkway. <coughs> Could you haul a baseball and get it to the, the dog, that little dog station? Yes. Okay. Softball? Uh, I don't know. Football? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. Thank you. May Mr. Joseph be excused? You may. Thank you very much. You are excused. Please call your next witness. Andrew Gall, please.
on the square affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. <coughs> You may proceed. Yes, you may. Good afternoon, sir. If you'd please tell the members of the jury your name. My name is Andrew Gaw. Mr. Gaw, where do you live currently? Can you have him spell his last name for the record, please? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Would you spell your name, please? G-A-U-G-H. All right. Can I get you to scoot up just a little closer to that microphone? Thank you so much. Where do you live currently? I live in Deltona, Florida. In Deltona, Florida is located where relative to Sanford? East. East Sanford. And how long, approximately how long have you lived in the Deltona area? Roughly about 17 years. And how old are you? I'm 20 years old. Are you employed at this time? Yes, sir. Where is it that you work? I work at Renner Center. Yes, sir. Renner Center. And what is it that you do for Renner Center? I'm a customer account representative. All right. Let me turn your attention to February 2012. Were you employed at that time? Yes, sir. And where were you employed? 7-Eleven. What was your position with 7-Eleven? I was a cashier. And how long were you employed with 7-Eleven? About a year. Were you assigned to a particular 7-Eleven store in February 2012? Yes, sir. And where was that store located? Off of Reinhardt Road. Judge, if you could dim the lights just for a moment. Let me show you State's Exhibit 2. Have you seen that aerial photograph before? Yes. All right. Does the aerial in States 2 accurately depict the location of the 7-Eleven located off of Reinhardt Road? Yes. Well, I'm going to need you to turn them off one more time. That's up to the court. I've got just a, a few questions in between. Thank you. Let me turn your attention then to Sunday, February 26th of last year. Did you work at the 7-Eleven on Reinhardt Road that day? Yes. And what were your hours? 4 to 10. A.M. or P.M.? 4 a.m. or, sorry, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. All right. Was there anyone else um, employed at 7-Eleven working your shift with you? No, sir. All right. And was that 7-Eleven store equipped with surveillance video cameras? Yes. Do the surveillance cameras capture images inside the store? Yes. Are there any surveillance cameras outside the store? No. And have you seen footage of your store from the evening of Sunday, February 26, 2012? Yes. Specifically, have you viewed footage from that evening of a young man who purchased an Arizona drink product and a bag of Skittles candies? Yes. Were you working the register for that particular purchase? Yes, sir. Did the young man pay for those items with cash or credit or what? Uh, cash. Do you recall any conversation that you would have had with that customer? No, sir. Was there anything about that customer that caused you any concern? Nope. Did you know the young man who purchased the Arizona drink product and the Skittles? No. To your knowledge, had you ever seen him before? No. All right, you know, at this time I would ask uh, to publish uh, states 184. You may do so. And you just want, I mean, you, if you could just pause it right there. All right. Mr. Gaw, um, looking at uh, the frame. Can you describe for the members of the jury where the cash register is um, on the screen? To the left. All right. Is it going to be this area that I've put in the semicircle? Yes, sir. All right. Um, what is at the front of the frame? What What would you see if you walk to the front of the frame? Candy, candy, gum, chips. All right. Is the front door also at the front of the frame? Yes. All right. As we look. In the back, is that the back of the store? Yes, sir. Okay. Is, and you've seen this before. Is the customer uh, that bought the Skittles and the uh, Arizona drink product the gentleman walking through the store right now? 
Yes. All right. Um, and the time, is that reflected uh, in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen? I'm sorry, can you repeat? Is the time of day reflected in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen? No. The 18-22-09, is that not the military time? Oh, I'm sorry, sir, yes. All right, and so that would be 6.22 p.m.? Yes, sir. All right, very good. If you would continue playing that. Mr. Gaw, is that you walking behind the register? Yes, sir. Mr. Gaw, it appeared that the gentleman who made the purchase picked up something off the floor before he left the store. Do you have any idea what that was? No, sir. Do you have any idea if he actually picked something up? No, sir. All right. Ms. Walter, if you could bring up one of the other camera angles. Mr. Gaw, are there multiple camera angles within that store of the register? Yes, sir. Yeah, we, yes. Okay. Uh, for example, on this camera view, is that now, again, looking at the counter? area? Yes, sir. All right. If you'd go to another one. In this view, is this actually from behind the counter, essentially over your shoulder looking out over the cash register? Yes, sir. And again, is this also a view of the area behind the register? Yes. All right. You know, that's all I have for Mr. Gall. Thank you. Thank you. Cross? If I might, I was going to have Mr. Gaw, I don't want to take part on the state's laptop, but I was going to have all four views shown, so I may as well do it now. Um, I probably know how to do it, but um, um, if Ms. it's okay, Judge, Ms. Walter, we'll be anything goes wrong with it, I don't okay. want it to be my fault. Start from the beginning. Yeah, uh, we saw the first one, so if you start with number two, that'd be great.
actually, if you would go to the, uh, I'm sorry, we do need to see this one as well. Thank you. Did you? Thank you very much. That would be enough then. Thank you. I appreciate the help. If I might inquire, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. G um, it's Gaw, correct, Mr. Gaw? Yes, sir. Great. Um, I note that in the beginning when uh, the person who we now know to be Trayvon Martin came in the store, that you were towards the back of the store. Was there any reason for that? Yes, sir. What was that? I was doing the temperature checks on all the coolers. Okay. And then um, you came up to the register, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then after Mr. Mar Trayvon Martin went back towards the back of the store, I noticed that you went back around the counter and seemed to be either watching him or having a conversation with him. Do you recall that? No, sir. You don't recall why you would have done that? Um, I usually go to the back room after I take care of customers. In the video, you seem to not go to the back room. You seem to come right around the counter and stop where he was by that front cooler. You don't recall any reason for that? No, sir. Okay. Um, when Mr. Martin came up to the counter, did you have any concern over the time it took him to get the right change to get money out of his pocket? No. Do you remember any of this? No, sir. So when you say, when you mentioned a moment ago that that was Trayvon Martin who purchased the Skittles and the Arizona fruit juice, that you don't remember this event at all, do you? No, sir. So you're just sort of answering because you look on the video and if we tell you that that was Trayvon Martin and that that was the transaction, you would concur with that, but you don't remember anything, right? No, sir. Okay. May I approach the witness for a moment, Your Honor? Mm -hmm. Sir, if you could just stand up and come out of the witness box for a minute. Maybe just right here. What type of shoes are you wearing? But say it out loud. Just uh, regular heels? Yes, sir. How tall are you? Five ten. Okay, thank you. Presumably you were 5'10 a year ago as well, right? I'm sorry? You were the same height about a year ago? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. No further questions from you. Thank you. Any redirect? Just briefly. So the bag that you put the drink can in, would that have been a 7-Eleven plastic bag? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Judge, it's all happened. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Gall, be excused? You may. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You may be excused. If you'll please call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Sean Doffey.
solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Nofke, if you would, first thing I'd like you to do, spell your last name for a court reporter. And it's in Nancy O, F is in Frank, F is in Frank, K-E. And since Sean has more than one spelling, give us that one too, please. <laughs> S-E-A-N. Mr. Nofke, if you would, briefly introduce yourself to ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Tell them how long you work, uh, where you work, and what you do. I'm a 911 operator with Seminole County Sheriff's Office, and I have been there for six years. And you said the Seminole County Sheriff's Office. Do you work in what's called the Communication Center? Yes, sir. And does that communication center handle calls only for the Seminole County Sheriff's Office? No, sir. Also, Sanford Police Department, Altamont Springs, Castleberry, Longwood, and Oviedo now. Now, you mentioned also that you are a 911 operator. Yes, sir. Uh, does the communication center also take calls that are to a line other than 911? Yes, sir. Non-emergency lines. Okay. And do you handle both those types of calls? Yes, sir. How many people sort of do the same thing you do? In the same room at the same time, approximately 30. Okay. And is there a distinction as to what types of calls each person handles, or do you all just kind of catch whatever comes in? Say so everything, uh, everyone handles everything. So you don't, you're not assigned to a particular shift to only handle 911 or only handle 9 emergency. You handle whatever comes in when it's your turn. That's right. Okay. And typically, what sort of shift do you work? I work typically night shift, overnight till 2 a.m. Tell me a little bit about what sort of training you have to help you do your job. It was approximately a month and a half to two months of training on the job with a training officer that sits with you, listens to your calls, and makes sure you're doing everything right. And these calls, when they come in, they record it? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you also write, write summaries of them? Yes. Yes, sir. Were you working on February 26th last year, 2012? I believe so. <laughs> Your Honor, if I could approach. Yes, I'll show you what's already been stipulated to the state's exhibit 173. It's a composite exhibit with an audio recording as well as a writing. Do you recognize those? Yes, sir. What's that? This is the recording of the, the non-emergency call I took as well as the printout of the screen that I typed up. And when you say the non-emergency call you took, you took more yes, than one that day. Yes, sir. All right. This is the one that has to do with this case, right? That's right. Mr. Nofke, before I get into going through that phone call, uh, tell us a little bit about how those calls come in and what you do when you get them. Uh, the lines ring in to our computer system that shows what line they are, if they're a 911 line or one of our non-emergency lines. Then it's as simple as, there's no rotation, it's just answer as you go. Okay. And this particular call, was it a 911 call or a non-emergency call? It was a non-emergency call. And when you got that call, uh, what is it, do you have a particular way that you are trained to handle and get information as it relates to these types of calls? Yes, sir. Uh, typically, at the beginning of the call, with non-emergencies, you, you address the caller with the agency name that the line is being recorded and your name as well. Do you have a sort of way to refer to the urgency of the type of call you get? Uh, yes, we do. Based on the situation that's given, we have policy standards that we follow. Okay. And tell me a little bit about how you distinguish and what, what you do to note the urgency level you ascribe to each call. We have signals and we actually have the urgency of the call. We have our own set standards. Uh, with this kind of call, it was routine. Uh, those calls are gener generally anything non-emergency, nothing life-threatening, or over with crimes. Uh, then you also have priority, which is anything in progress and typically a physical fight or just occurred robbery. And then you also have urgent, which is typically anything with a weapon or where a loss of life could immediately happen. Do you have a place on your written summary where you assign the priority that you have given to this particular type of call? Yes, sir. And can you tell me what, where it is and what you call it, what it looks like? Yes, it's at the top. <clears throat> it's the event type. And this, would, uh, this was coded as routine. Okay. How do I know that from looking at your summary, for example? Right at the top, it says uh, it's the total, the whole thing is 13 PIR. 
And is there a section where you designate the priority for the call? Yes, sir. That the R is what to, what uh, stipulates that R for routine. Do you use numbers sometimes too? Yes, sir. That's for the signal to tell you what type of call it is. Okay. And what type of call did you designate this signal as being? This was a 13P, which is a suspicious person. Okay. And how about a category one, two, or three? You familiar with what I'm talking about there? Yes, sir. Uh, with this, this would have been a three. That also just states that it's a routine call. Two for priority, one for urgent. All right. Explain for me the difference between priority and urgent. Priority is anything uh, just occurred with a uh, just occurred theft or robbery or anything with a physical fight. And urgent is anything with a weapon or where uh, immediate loss of life can happen. Okay. When these calls come in, do you attempt to figure out who's calling? Yes, sir. All right. Now, I understand that some calls that come into your call center have an automatic caller ID function and some don't. Can you tell us what the difference is? Yes. Our 911 system has caller ID. If it's from a cell phone, it doesn't give you a location, but it gives you their callback number and the cell tower hits off of. If it's a landline, such as a residence or a business, it'll show us the exact address and the city that it's coming from. Non-emergency does not have that function. Okay. So non-emergency, you actually have to ask the questions? Yes, sir. And do you do that as soon as you can? Yes. Your Honor, with permission, I'd like to publish states as it wants to be free to enforce it. You may do so. <clears throat> I turn the lights down, but you don't need the lights. I don't need the lights down for this, but I wonder if you turned on the volume too. This is not working. I didn't touch the volume. Okay. I just, I guess, ask the court to inquire, make sure everybody can hear. Okay. Can you hear? Okay. If Thank at you. any time you can't hear, if you'll indicate that. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Nofke, you recognize your voice there? Yes, sir. Okay. And you recognize this to be the call you took? That's right. This is Kai. Uh, it's Retreat View Circle. Um, the best address I can give you is 111 Retreat View Circle. This guy looks like he's up to no good or he's on drugs or something. It's raining and he's just walking around looking about. Okay, and this guy, is he white, black, or Hispanic? He looks black. Did you see what he was wearing? Yeah, a dark hoodie, like a gray hoodie, and either jeans or sweatpants and white tennis shoes. He's here now. He was just staring. Oh, he's just walking around the area? at all the houses. Okay. Now he's just staring at me. Okay. And so it's 1111 retrieve you or 111? That's the, that's the clubhouse. That's he's the clubhouse. The Do you know what the, house. he's near the clubhouse right now? Yeah, now he's coming towards me. Okay. He's got his hand in his waistband. And he's a black male. Okay. How old would you say he looks? He's got a button on his shirt. Late teens. Late teens, okay. Mm-hmm. Something's wrong with him. Yeah. He's coming to check me out. He's got something in his hands. I don't know what his deal is. Okay, just let me know if he does anything, okay? Over here. Yeah, we got him on the way. Just let me know if this guy does anything else. Okay. These assholes, they always get away. 
Mr. Nofke, you asked at one point there to let you know if the person that the caller was watching did anything else. Yes, sir. Are you asking when you have these conversations with people, do you, what does your training tell you about whether you want callers to sort of engage in investigative activity? <laughs> Always with us, we're trying to avoid any kind of confrontation. So we ask that in case something does happen so we can immediately update the units. When you come to the clubhouse, you come straight in and make a left. Actually, you would go past the clubhouse. Um, it says on the left-hand side from the clubhouse? No, you go in straight through the entrance, and then you make a left. Uh, yeah, You go straight in. Don't turn and make a left. Shit, he's running. He's running? Which way is he running? Uh, down towards the... Uh... Mr. Nofke, we heard conversation about he's running and then virtually immediately a, a chiming noise did you have you heard that kind of noise before yes sir and what did you recognize that to be a uh, car door okay. virtually contemporaneous with the comment about running yes sir we heard you ask which way that's right okay. again are you asking for any sort of follow-up or are you just asking which which way did he go Asking which way he went for the officers so we can update them as well. Okay. Which entrance is that that he's heading towards? The back entrance. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. Mr. Nofke, we've now heard the comments about these assholes and and Another comment under the breath there. Gotcha. Why did you ask if all of a sudden just bust out with the question about are you following him? Where did that come from and why did you ask? It, it sounded like movement and wind coming through the phone after he stated that he was, that the subject was running. So I immediately asked if he was following. Have you heard that kind of thing before? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, is that why you asked? Yes, sir. And when you said we don't need you to do that, I'm just going to ask you, how come you don't or didn't uh, say, you know, order the person to stop and don't follow and anything like that? Why did you phrase it like you phrased it? The reason we do that is because we're directly liable if we give a direct order. So we always try to give general, basic, not commands, but just suggestions. So do I understand you to be telling us that you would not, as a dispatch or as a, as a call taker, order a person to either follow or not follow. That's correct. And that's because you're on the hook for their actions if they follow your order. That's right. But you were clear here it was not necessary for him to follow anything. That's right. And the response was okay? Yes. Okay. Mr. Nofke, I'm still hearing those noises. Is that yes, the same noises that you heard? That is. Okay. Yeah, I, I got it. It's 407 435 2400. 
Yeah, you got it. Okay, no problem. I'll let them know to call you when they're in the area. Thanks. You're welcome. Mr. Nofke, what is the purpose of trying to figure out where the caller actually is located? He said he wanted to meet with an officer, so we need to know where the actual, where we need to actually send the officer to. Okay. And that went from address to truck to call me? Yes. As far as um, you hanging up the phone? Yes, sir. Under what circumstances on a call that comes in as a non-emergency call, would you, as a dispatcher, sort of stay on the line? Any call where the actual person or that's causing the problem or any altercation where they're actually physically still in the area or they're still being violent, uh, with this kind of situation, that wasn't the case? If a caller simply says, hey, can you stay on the line with me? Yes, sir. Would you stay on it then? Yes, sir. Um, and do I understand that, that your, the, the caller here said to you that um, to just have the officers call him as opposed to waiting in, in back in his truck? Yes, sir. Okay. If I could have just a moment, Your Honor. Yes, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. No other questions. Okay, thank you, Cross. Yes, thank you. And I'm also going to uh, use your device if I might. Thank you. How to do, sir? How are you? I'm presuming that when you took this phone call back on the 26th, that it was a routine call for you? Yes, sir. You did not know that this was going to become the George Zimmerman case when you first took the phone call, correct? That's right. And it didn't, there was nothing, was there anything particularly unusual about this call? Just in general, we'll talk specifics in a minute. No, sir. Um, and of course now, um, even on the internet, you become sort of, sort of a mini celebrity for a moment because you were the one who answered the call. Yes, sir. It's been analyzed by hundreds if not thousands of people, correct? That's right. And of course you've now had a much more focused opportunity to review the tape, getting ready for your deposition here today. That's right. Correct? Great. I I'm sorry. Deposition. I meant trial. Sorry. Yes, sir. I uh, want to talk to you a little bit about that, if I might. And we are going to, uh, I think, have to go through the tape just one more time. Um, so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to let it play a little bit. Stop and we'll chat, OK? OK. Hopefully. Sanford Police Department, lines being recorded by Sean. Hey, we've had some break-ins in my neighborhood and there's a real suspicious... We had some break-ins in the neighborhood. You yes. have an opportunity, do you not, to identify the location pretty quickly when you're on the phone with landlines, correct? Yes, sir. With cell phones, not as quickly. No. Which is why do you try and get some of the information from the person pretty quickly as to where they are? That's right. When getting that information, does that give you an opportunity to look at the situation, the subdivision, the mall it might be in, to identify whether or not there have been problems there in the past? It does give us the opportunity. It'll show us what subdivision or business name, if there is one. Okay. Guy, uh, it's Retrieve You Circle. Um, the best address I can give you is 111 Retrieve You Circle. This guy looks like he's up to no good or he's on drugs or something. It's raining and he's just walking around looking about. Do you hear any anger in that voice? No, sir, I wouldn't say so. Am I uh, already messing up? Oh, then give me one second so I can take my junk off that. Thank you. Sorry, Your Honor. Anything in that initial conversation about you where he's to you where he says suspicious person, guy just looks like he's on drugs or something, it's raining. Anything that gave you a cause for concern about the caller? No, sir. Okay. And you say, is he 
white, black, or Hispanic? Is that a standard question for identification of the, I'm going to call him the um, suspicious person for, for this purpose, okay? Yes, sir. Why do you ask the race? The officer needs to know who they're looking for. It's just identification, yes, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, based upon you asking that question was when he said to you the words, he looks black. Yes, sir. All right. Did he say that in any way that gave, gave you cause for concern? No, sir. Okay. Then you said you see what he was wearing. Similarly, yes, you also ask that for identification purposes? That's right. That's mainly because if you're going to send an officer, not decided yet, but if you're going to, you want to have that information readily available because it goes out to the cops pretty much right away, right? That's right. Okay. And that's the main purpose of it? Yep. Any concern with how he answered that? No, sir. Hispanic? He looks black. Did you see what he was wearing? Yeah, a dark hoodie, like a gray hoodie, and either jeans or sweatpants and white tennis shoes. Any concern with the way he presented that? Any anger in his voice? Any animosity that you could detect? No, sir. You are somewhat trained, are you not? Uh, six years you've been doing this? That's right trained, aren't you, to get a good feel for the situation that you're addressing? Yes, sir. Because obviously if someone is screaming on one end of the phone, you know that that would be a more immediate concern, right? That's right. Um, if somebody's obviously intoxicated on the phone, that would be another focus of yours, right? That's right. I, I've heard stories of people calling 911 to, to order pizza. Yes, right? sir. So you have to deal with that stuff as well? That's right. So are you trained pretty well to filter both in and out of your concern areas, the way, people's in, the way people are interacting with you? Yes, sir. Were you doing that this day? I can't answer that. Oh, I, I just don't remember. listening? Just listening? No. You were? I'm sorry. Not? Yes, sir. Yes, I okay. was. Okay. He's here now. He was just staring. Oh, he's just walking around the area. at all the houses. Oh, okay. Now he's just staring at me. Okay, and so it's one 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 retrieve you or one eleven? That's the that's the clubhouse. That's the clubhouse. That's Do you know what the house. he's near the clubhouse right now? Yeah, now he's coming towards me. Okay. He's got his hand in his waistband. And he's a black male. No, when he said that to you, he's got his hand in his waistband and he's a black male. What did you take that to mean? That he had a hand in his pocket. Nothing, anything more than that? No, sir. Was he just further describing him that he said he looks black earlier and now he is a black male? Yes, sir. Did that cause you any concern? No. How old would you say he looked? He's got a button on his shirt. Late teens. Late teens, okay. Mm-hmm. Something's wrong with him. Yeah. He's coming to check me out. He's got something in his hands. I don't know what his deal is. Okay, just let me know if he does anything, okay? Over. You say to him, after he says, he's got something in his hands, yes, he's coming to check me out, don't know what his deal with, you then say, just let me know if he does anything. That's okay? right. That evidence is a concern that you had for the situation, right? That's right. Okay, because at least at this point, the caller, has he evidenced any anger or animosity yet at this point of the conversation? No, sir. Yet he is telling you that he now has a concern about somebody coming towards him, maybe with his hand in his waistband or something. That's right. Okay. So, again, based upon your training, was that in an attempt to keep him interacting with you and to find out what else this guy may do? Yes, sir. Okay. And then he says, get an officer over here, right? Yes, sir. Um, did you at that point then get to that level, if you will, of getting an officer on the way? I can't recall that specifically. Um, is that identified at all? Let me, if I might, it's now, I believe, in evidence, correct? So if I might show you what's now been released into evidence. Is the sheet that goes with it also? It's with him? Yes. Oh, great. So I'm just going to have you look at it while I look at mine and show you on the middle of the page right there where you start talking about how you make entries, correct? That's right. And there's an entry in there, isn't there, that talks about the request for police? Yes, sir. Okay. Would that have occurred about the same time as this request that you send somebody over? 
I can't answer that specifically without the times matching up. Okay. You weren't um, here for our little timeline earlier, were you no, sitting sir. in the courtroom? Okay. But at some point, nonetheless, they asked for, or I'm sorry, Mr. Zimmerman asked for um, you to send a police officer. That's correct. Right. And then you repeat, yeah, we have them on the way. So presumably you're about the same time that you're getting them there, right? That's right. With, with you telling the caller that? Yes. Okay. And then you repeat again, just let me know if this guy does anything else. That's right. Now, based upon your six years of doing this and just your common sense, if you tell somebody twice to let you know if the person that they're concerned about is doing anything else. Do you think they're going to keep their eye on them? I can't answer that. You, you're the one, you did tell them twice to let you know if that guy did anything else. Yes, sir. Right? And you're in, would you agree, sort of the authoritative or command position as the operator on the call? Yes, sir. You're supposed to be directing the situation as best you can, right? Without giving direct orders. Yeah, we'll talk about direct orders in a second. Um, but you are trained to take situations, identify them fairly quickly, and to resolve them as best you can. That's right. right. And um, on two occasions, you told Mrs. Zimmerman to let you know whether or not this guy does anything else. That's right. Okay. It was suggested whether or not that was your intent to imbue or to invest upon Mr. Zimmerman the opportunity or the requirement to perform investigative duties. That, and I think you said, of course not. Right? No, no, sir. You just told him to keep an eye on the guy. In case he approached him further and started an altercation to immediately let me know so I could update the officers. Okay. Did you intend by that also to keep an eye on him just to keep an eye on him? No, sir. Why not? It's best to avoid any kind of confrontation, to just get away from the situation. Then he says these words. Yeah, we got him on the way. Just let me know if this guy does anything else. Okay. That, by the way, is your second time, right? Yes, sir. These assholes, they always get away. Did, was there any anger in that comment that you heard? It sounded calm to me. Okay. Yeah. When you come to the clubhouse, you come straight in and make a left. Actually, you would go past the clubhouse. Uh, and it says on the left-hand side from the clubhouse? No, you go in straight through the entrance, and then you make a left. Uh, yeah, you go straight in, don't turn and make a left. Shit, he's running. He's running? Which way is he running? Now, you've now asked him twice to let you know if he does anything else, correct? Yes, sir. And then you say, which way is he running? That's right. Now, a moment ago, you said that you might say, tell me what he's doing, um, because if there's going to be a confrontation or an altercation, you need to know that. That's right. But I thought you said you weren't going to suggest that he do anything else but that. That's right. Based upon six years of doing this, do you think that if you ask somebody which way they're running, which way somebody else is running, that they may actually go find out? That's an object. That's speculation. He's asking what someone else might think based on what he says. Uh, I'm going to overrule because he asked the question, I believe, was what does um, Mr. Knopf Yeah, well, what would you think when saying that to someone? I'm wondering if you acknowledge or if you think that when you say to somebody, which way is he running, that they may actually go check out which way he's running. My intent was to get a location for the officers to look, but I can understand if someone interpreted it a different way. I can't, I can't control the way they interpret the words. Absolutely. And, and please understand, I'm certainly not suggesting that you had some responsibility in Mrs. Zimmerman getting out of the car. but because you didn't tell him to get out of the car, did you? No, I did not. But you did ask him, which way is he running? That's right. 
Now, you said a moment ago that you did hear the, the concept of a doorbell chiming. That's right. Back then, I mean, obviously now, today, we know it. But I'm just really curious if you can think back to when this was a non-event phone call for you, um, back when it was just very routine. Did you, did you actually even notice the door chiming? I can't answer that. I, sure. I don't recall. Sure. You know it today because yes. we've had a year and a half of listening to it. But back then, the chiming didn't mean anything to you, did it? it I can't answer that one way or another. down towards the uh, other entrance of the neighborhood. Okay, which entrance is that that he's heading towards? The back entrance. <laughs> Again, um, at that point you're asking for more information from Mrs. Zimmerman That's to right. know where, who turns out to be Trayvon Martin was heading? That's right. You wanted to know which way he was heading? That's right. In what direction? Yes. Towards what entrance? Yes, sir. And what path? Specifically for the officers to know where exactly to look for oh, this sorry. person. No, my point was you also wanted to know what path he was taking, correct? That's right. Okay. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. Now that's where you suggest that you can't give a direct order. That's right. But um, certainly you can tell someone to stay in a house, right? It's not that simple with, you don't want to give direct orders to someone. You can make a suggestion for their safety. If somebody is on the phone with you and there's gunfire outside and yes, sir. cops are involved, and someone says, I'm going to go out and check out what's going on. You're not going to order them to, I know we can't use the word order. Yes. You're not going to tell them to stay inside? I would also tell them, we don't need you to go outside, stay. Just stay where you are. Okay, so is that sort of just the way you have to say it so you avoid liability? Yes, sir. And Mr. Zimmerman responded, correct? That's right. What did he say? I believe it was okay. All right. Um, now, these shuffling noises that we heard a little while ago? Yes, sir. Would you acknowledge that that's probably wind noise? Yes, sir. Okay. And so he gets out of the car. He is talking to you on the phone and you hear wind noise. Yes, sir. There's no suggestion from you, is there, that he was running? It sounded like his breathing was strained. Had gotten out of the car and you heard breathing strained over the noise? Yes, sir. Okay. And then you see he said okay and you still hear the noise? For I believe a few extra seconds afterwards. Is that yes. the same wind noise? Yes, sir. Is that noise simply from having a cell phone outside of a car? Possibly. Okay. You don't suggest it's anything else, do you? I can't answer that. Okay. I'm just curious because you're the one listening. Yes, sir. That's what we're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. Do, do you hear any breathing sound there? No. Okay. So even if you heard breathing sounds before, you definitely didn't hear them just then, did no. you? Okay. Suggesting, if I might, that he's no longer breathing heavy? I, I have no, I, no okay. way of knowing that. Okay. George. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, sir, what is your name? George. He ran. All right, George, what's your last name? Zimmerman. Again, at this point, after he thought Trayvon Martin ran, did you hear any anger in his voice or any upset? No, sir. Anything that caused you any concern for how Mrs. Zimmerman was acting th throughout all this? No, sir. And you're still trying to get information? Hey, George, what the fuck are you calling from? 407-435-2400. And this is more of a curiosity. I thought you had his phone number. 
we always have to ask for it, whether we have it or not. Okay. But on this type of call, no, there's no caller ID on the non-emergency lines. So we do have to ask for gotcha. it. Gotcha. So non-emergency, cell phone, you don't get the number that shows up? That's right. 911, you do? You do. But you and also have to verify it as well. No matter what? Make sure no matter you have it right? Yes. Great. Would you have them on the way? Do you want to meet with the officer when they get out there? Why do you ask that? Because simply with this kind of call, they mm -hmm. don't have to meet with an officer. Sure. It could just be check the area for this person, but you always want to ask whether okay. they want to or not. Uh, makes sense, I guess, since they have the information to relate to the officer? That's right. Okay. And is it standard protocol that you give them the option? Yes, sir. So had George Zimmerman said no, then there would have been no other phone call, no other meet where or how or when or with whom, and That's right. that would have been it. That's right. But he said, yeah. Yep. Did he insist on that? No, sir. Yeah. All right, where are you going to meet with them at? Um, if they come in through the uh, gate, tell them to go straight past the clubhouse. And, uh... What? Did you hear that? Yes, sir. What do you think that was? I have no idea. Could that have been, and I'm not certain if you've heard this before on a 911 call, flashlight against the palm, trying to get, see if it's on? That's the witness suspected. He's already said he doesn't know. Sustained. Did you tell, give me your insight as, let's hear that again, and tell me what you, if you can, tell me what that is. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, let me, let me stop that for one second. My concern is that I should have let his objection is overruled. You could play it okay. for him again. Yeah, I just I interrupted. I apologize, Your Honor. Um, if they come in through the uh, gate, tell them to go. It's that noise. Yes, sir. At, at all, any insight on what that is? No idea. Straight past the clubhouse. And uh, again, any no any idea. insight whatsoever? No, sir. Did it seem as though it was coming from his side of the call? I can't answer that. Okay. Didn't come from your side of the call, did it? I, I have no okay. idea. Okay, sorry. Straight past the clubhouse and make a left, and then they go past the mailboxes. Look at my truck. Okay, what, what address are you truck? parking? Now, um, In his attempt to identify a location for you to have the officers meet him at, he told you that they would see the truck. Yes, sir. Any reason why you didn't ask him for the description of the truck at that point? No, not that I can recall specifically. Um, is that standard protocol that when you're going to meet somebody by a vehicle, you get it identified? Yes, sir. And any explanation for why that didn't happen here? No. Okay. I don't know. It's a cut through, so I don't know the address. Okay, do you live in? It's a cut through. I don't know the address. Do you live in the area? Did you have any concern at that point about how Mrs. Zimmerman was acting? No, sir. The area? Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what's your apartment number? It's a home. It's 1950. Oh, crap. I don't want to give it out loud. I don't know where this kid is. Did that give you any cause for concern that didn't want to get out an address while this suspicious person was still nearby? No, sir. Okay, do you want to just meet with them right near the mailboxes, Bob? Yeah, that's fine. Now, when he said that, did that seem to make sense to both to you? The mailboxes were identified location and just meet there? Yes, sir. Any concern then when... All right, George, I'll let him know to meet you with the out there. Actually, okay? could, you have him, could you have him call me and I'll tell him where I'm at? Okay. When he said that, any concern with just having the officer call him? No, sir. Any, did anything go up on your spidey sense or your radar that that was problematic? No, sir. When we talked about these changes, I think Mr. Manti said something like, from mailbox to truck to call me. I'm sorry, address to truck to call me. Did that give you the person actually listening, any cause for concern as to how Mrs. Zimmerman was acting? No, sir. Yeah, that's all. Give me my 
number? You got it? Yeah, I, I got it. Four seven four three five two four zero zero. Yeah, you got it. Okay, no problem. I'll let them know to call you when they're in the area. Thanks. You're welcome. I think Mr. Manti asked as well, um, did this call seem to rise to a level of concern where you felt the need to keep Mrs. Zimmerman on the call? No, sir. Why not? The person who he saw that was suspicious had left the area, so there was no, there was no need for him to follow, and there was no concern for his safety. Any concern in the presentation that, that George Zimmerman said, or how he presented to you, that caused you any concern? No, sir. Any of the words that he said? No, sir. I mean, we hear there that he says fucking punks. Is that, was that something that got your blood rushing in some form or fashion? No, sir. You've heard that many, many times in That's your right. life as a 911 operator? That's right. Is um, cursing, since you do it on a daily basis, is cursing something that you hear in many of the phone calls you take on? That's right. Any concerns about these words that cause you any real concern? No, sir. How about the idea that he said these assholes always get away? No, sir. None whatsoever? No. Then you treated this call as many of your others. You'd sent an officer out there. Did you then just move on in your duties? That's right. Do you, have, you, you don't keep track of what's going on with calls once you finish them, do you? I typically do, yes. Oh, okay. Um, anything significant about this? After finding out what actually happened related oh, to other okay. calls we got, yes. Right. Because obviously there we will know, as the evidence will present, there are a lot of 911 phone calls that came in from the area. That's right. Okay. I might just have a moment, Your Honor. Yes, you may. Thanks very much, Your Honor, for the questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Please, Your Honor. Mr. Nofke, the caller never identified uh, the individual by name or suggested that he knew who he was, did he? No, it's, no, sir. Okay. Um, but yet called him an asshole and a fucking punk. That's right. Okay. Uh, does that... Mr. Romero was asking, does it suggest to you any number of things? Does it suggest to you that he had nice feelings and warm I'm thoughts? Sorry, Ron, this would be redirect still with the rules, so I'd object to this leading the witness. Your okay. Honor. Please reface your question. Do, does it suggest uh, to you that the caller had nice thoughts or something else? Leading, again, Your Honor. Uh, yes, sir. It, it suggests calling someone an asshole on a fucking phone? Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, okay. sir. No. no. Uh, <laughs> might it suggest... Things such as ill will. Yes. Objection, Your Honor, and leading, leading question, Your Honor. Okay, we'll rephrase your question. Sure. Mr. O'Mara discussed whether you had any, whether it elevated, I think, your blood was the phrase that he used. Yes, sir. You're used to hearing people call each other these things. That's right. Okay. Um, and the, uh, Feelings that follow with those words in your experience are what? Hostile. There was a point where you asked the race of the individual. That's right. And you got an answer. Yes, sir. What was the answer? Black male. Okay. He looked black. Yes, sir. There was a second point. Do you remember the uh, part where you discussed with Mr. O'Mara has his hand in his waistband. That's right. And then the next phrase was? I don't recall specifically. OK. Do you remember being told he's a black male again? Yes, sir. Did you ask that time? No, sir. And in fact, you'd already heard. That's right. Um, and when you said, and Mr. O'Mara asked you, uh, your words to the caller, the defendant, that's right. About, let me know if he does anything else. Remember those questions? Yes, sir. Okay, were your words? My exact words? Yes. 
<clears throat> I don't recall exactly word for word. Did, did we hear it on the tape? Yes, sir. Did you say, let me know? Yes. Did you say, go find out? No. Did you say, follow or keep an eye on? No, sir. Did you say, go investigate? No. I'm going to focus for a minute. This is the part of the tape where we hear uh, the getting out of the car. That's right. He goes straight in. Don't turn and make a left. Shit, he's running. He's running. Which way is he running? Uh, down. Okay. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. How long was it between he's running, which way he's running, and those door noises? Immediately. Okay. So getting out of the car, was that because you asked anything, or was that already in progress? Object, Your Honor, that would call speculation from this witness. It's the same. Does the tape speak for itself? Yes. It's all going on right at the same time. That's right. Now, you talked about the wind noise versus the running noise. Remember that series yes. of questions. And the, I guess Mr. Romero asked you, you, you thought it might be running, I think you said because you also heard some breathing? Yes, sir. Okay. There was a point in time where the, the, what you described as wind noise stops. You recall that? That's right. Okay. Um, but I guess let me ask you, what clued you into getting out of the car was the noises we just heard, the clicking and the door chimes and that? Yes. Did you ever hear anything indicating he got back in the car? No, sir. But there was a point in time where the wind noise stopped? That's right. And yet the conversation went on? That's right. So whatever stopped that wind noise wasn't getting back in a car? I, I don't know. No other questions, Judge? Thank you. Just a few. So possibly the wind noise may have stopped because he had gone past an opening area to where he walked next to another building and the wind stopped. Would that be a possibility? A possibility, yes. Okay. So it could have happened that way, right? He was in the, out in the open, let's say in an area between two buildings, then he walked past the opening between two buildings. When he got next to the second building, the wind stopped? That's a possibility. Okay. Did you ever, you knew he got out of the car. I think we now, did you, let's be clear, because I thought you cleared this up earlier. We now know that he got out of the car because 16 months of all this, but I thought you said back then, with that little dinging, did you mm -hmm. even know he got out of the car? I can't answer that one way or another. You don't know, right? Yes. The, if you had heard dings and you remembered him back then and thought he got out of the car and asked him if he was following him. Right? Because you did do that. Yes, sir. Why didn't you tell him to go back to the car? I had no idea if he was in a car or not. Well, he told you where his truck was, right? That was afterwards. Oh, okay. The, um, the hostility that might come from fucking punks. I want to be clear. Did you hear any of that hostility in the conversation? No, sir. Okay. So while you may believe that if someone says fucking punks somewhere else, it might be a hostile statement, the hostility was not evident in any of your conversation with Mr. Zimmerman, was it? No, sir. Okay. And this part about looking black and actually being black. That's right. Um, his first statement to you was, you asked him race, and he said he looks black. That's right. Did that seem definitive to you? No, sir. He didn't just say he's black, he said he looks black. That's right. And then, when he got a better look at him as he was coming towards him, I think with his hand in his waist, he said he's a black male. That's right. Did that to you just seem like he was confirming the race? Yes. Did it seem like he was fo focusing on saying black twice because he had some racial overtones to it? I have no idea. I okay. can't answer that. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Any re redirect? No, Your Honor. May, may Mr. Nofke be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Subject to possible recall. Thank you, sir. Your excuse subject to being recalled. Thank you. Thank you. Call your next witness. Ramona Rump, Your Honor.